Welcome to City View. I'm your host, Leslie Sopko. In this episode, some shocking stats on the number of Texans waiting for organ transplants and what you can do to help. We'll also challenge you to reduce your carbon footprint. But first, have you ever thought about what Austin will look like 30 years from now? As the city continues to grow, it's time for Austinites to help shape that vision. As part of the Imagine Austin Comprehensive Plan, the city is gathering public input from as many residents as possible through a new project called Speak Week. Here's a look at why your opinion does matter. So what we're doing right now is called Speak Week. This is the first time the city's ever taken on an endeavor like this. We're actually going out to the public to gather public input on the city's Imagine Austin comprehensive plan. The objective is to get out to where the people are because we have regular community forums but a lot of people can't get out to those forums. It's, you know, they don't have transportation or the timing's not right. So we figured we should just go to where people are and different kinds of places. Like today, we're at the Dove Springs Recreation Center and we got to talk to a lot of young people, which was wonderful because they have ideas about the city too. And after all, in 20 years, this is gonna be their town. It's, it's, it's good for the city to come in the community. They have a better understanding of what the community needs. And also the community have a better understanding of who their leaders are. It's good for them to come out into the community, to talk to the children, to talk to the parents, to give them an understanding of what they're trying to accomplish, to let them know what part they play in helping grow Austin. Well, so far we're getting a lot of input about density. Some people want to see residential buildings that are tall and hold a lot of people. Other people are very opinionated about wanting single family homes. So we're seeing quite a mix so far, but we've just gotten started. So it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out after we talk to a lot of people. Volunteers are staffing kiosks at local malls, college campuses, rail and bus stations, and even Alamo Draft House. To learn more about the Imagine Austin comprehensive plan, visit imagineaustin.net. Well, many Austinites might think they're registered to be an organ donor, but oftentimes they're not. With more than 100,000 people on a wait list for organ transplants, the city is asking for your help. Mayor Pro Tem Mike Martinez and City Manager Mark Ott joined the Texas Organ Sharing Alliance for a news conference to kick off Donate Life Month. Well, today we've been invited by Mayor Pro Tem Martinez for the kickoff of Donate Life Month and a huge initiative with the City of Austin to promote organ donation. Mayor Pro Tem came up with a great idea to not only educate um, City of Austin employees, but go out to the community and educate through libraries and the mobile health van unit and a variety of ways and media. So it's, it's just, it's a wonderful opportunity. Well, we're launching the campaign uh, to get folks to register as organ donors. What we know is that um, there are 107,000 people on a waiting list for uh, organ donation, and many of them won't receive that, that donation. I think it's our responsibility to reach out to folks and explain to them uh, about organ donation and how you go about registering uh, to become a donor. And so we're, we're going to start by reaching out to our City of Austin employees, but at the same time, we're going to reach out to the entire community. We're putting this information in libraries, hopefully through Channel 6. Many folks will see this. Go to DonateLifeTexas.org and register as an organ donor today. In 1999, I had a heart transplant. So I'm doing well, obviously. And as long as I'm doing well, I want to let the world, and today, especially Austin and the area, know about the need for organ donation. Whenever you watch a Longhorn game, there are about 100 thousand or so people watching that game and cheering on the Longhorns. Think about the fact that that's about how many people are waiting for an organ of some type in this country. About 9,000, almost 10,000 Texans. How many people have to die before we all get together and decide that we are the solution to this problem? People are the solution. I just want to remind people that one person can save eight lives. And if they're a tissue donor, they can save or enhance the lives of 50 or more. So I just want to encourage people to please, please, please DonateLifeTexas.org is where they can make their wishes known. It'll put their name on the state registry and you can, have, you can be a hero. Now it's time for an Austin City Council update from Larry Schooler. Austin Energy's Resource Generation and Climate Protection Plan won City Council approval. The plan calls for Austin to increase how much energy it gets from solar power along with reducing carbon dioxide by 20% below 2005 levels, improving energy efficiency, and increasing the share of local energy taken from renewable sources like wind. 
The plan will take effect only after staff develops goals for affordability. There's more information about the plan on the Austin Energy website. Council approved funding for traffic signal and street projects using federal stimulus funding. The funding will pay for installing or modifying traffic signals throughout the city. It will also pay for maintenance and repairs on about 22 lane miles of city streets, including East 7th, East Riverside, South Lamar, and East Stasny. Council also approved changes to an agreement with Capital Metro. Under the agreement, Capital Metro will eventually, over time, make good on its remaining commitment to reimburse the city for $51 million. That's money the city is owed in exchange for transportation projects the city constructed. Some transportation projects may be delayed under the agreement, including intersection improvements in South Austin, Cameron Road, Runberg Lane, and Guadalupe Street near UT, along with some bike routes. In all, Council considered 58 items at its April 22nd meeting. Its next meeting is April 29th. For City View, I'm Larry Schooler. To view previous City Council meetings online, please visit the Channel 6 website at cityofaustin.org slash channel 6. In other news, all Austinites should be doing what they can to help preserve our environment. In 2007, the Austin Climate Protection Plan was put in place to help the city reduce its carbon footprint. Now a new campaign called One Green Step is asking people to reduce their environmental impact one step at a time. For one person, that might mean taking public transportation to work. For another, it could mean doing a better job recycling at home. Under our zero waste plan, we intend to reduce the amount of waste that goes into our landfills by 90% by the year 2040. That's a huge goal. We know it won't be easy to achieve, but we're determined to do it because it's the right thing to do. And the right thing to do, not only for our environment, but also for future generations of Austinites. All of us have a big part to play in meeting a goal like this. And that's what the One Green Step program is really about. Many people are, are befuddled in, in the news as to the environmental degradation and what they can do about it and how they can deal with, with uh, their lives. And, and it's challenging to, to impact your own life and, and make changes. And One Green Step uh, gives you the opportunity to take one step at a time. And the idea is you take the first step and then you take the second step. And you, it, it, it's a little more achievable to uh, green your life. Each person with their one step, with their one green step, will really get a chance to move the whole city in the right direction. And also by everybody taking their first one green step, it means that uh, you know once, once they see how painless that was, you might say, and how, what the benefit of that was, uh, it lets us move on to taking a second, a third, and a fourth step. And, uh, but I think people shouldn't underestimate what if we really can inspire each of us to make one green step, what that will add up to for the city. For more information on the One Green Step campaign, visit AustinRecycles.com. Well, here's another option for reducing your carbon footprint. The weather is getting nicer, so consider grabbing your bike instead of your car. May is National Bicycle Month, and the City of Austin is hosting a series of events to help inspire you to make this change. Some of those events include a kickoff at Live from the Plaza and a public art tour by bike. We're even providing bike-to-work breakfast stations at various spots all over the city. For a complete list of activities, visit cityofaustin.org slash rideyourbike. If you've ever wondered how a street or park gets its name, this could be the perfect opportunity for you. The City of Austin Parks and Recreation Department is currently accepting ideas for a Central Austin Neighborhood Park located next to Zilker Elementary School. The park can be named after a person or persons, or even a place or natural feature. To submit a nomination, call 974-6716 or visit cityofaustin.org slash parks slash namingform.htm. Once the Parks Board has reviewed all of your suggestions, a recommendation will be made to the Austin City Council for final approval. That's all for this edition of City View. I'm your host, Leslie Sopko. Our next episode premieres Friday, April 23rd. Thanks for watching.